Welcome everyone. Today I will be presenting my work on heterogeneous integration of uni-traveling carrier photodiodes on a silicon nitride platform using microtransfer printing. Motivation for this research arises from a need for faster detectors in multiple technological domains. Optical transceivers are pushing batteries higher, microwave photonics are shifting to higher carrier frequencies, and photomixing is still the preferred way for terahertz radiation generation. A first trend we can observe is that silicon nitride is adopted as the high-performance integrated silicon photonics platform. It features very low losses, has superior filters, and does not suffer from tooth photon absorption. A second trend is the usage of advanced photodiodes like uni-traveling carrier photodiodes as high-performance detectors. Compared to regular pin photodiodes, its photoresponse is higher and it has a higher saturation power due to the reduced space charge screening effect. But all vertically illuminated photodiodes suffer a fundamental trade-off. In order to achieve a high responsivity, the device needs to be large. This in turn results in a slow device. However, by coupling light evanescently into the photodiode, also small devices can achieve a high responsivity. Last year it was shown this can be done using wafer bonding on a silicon nitride platform. I will demonstrate this using microtransfer printing. Microtransfer printing is a flexible approach to heterogeneous integration. Compared to other types of integration, it has the additional benefits of integrating different epi components very closely together. It allows most processing to be done already on the source 3.5 wafer. This technology is scalable to production environments thanks to its high throughput and it has a very efficient use of 3.5 material. This brings me to the fabrication of the UTC photodiodes for transfer printing on silicon nitride. Processing starts like regular 3.5 processing. A P contact is made, the waveguide mesa is etched. Also the end contact is deposited and the device itself is etched using a silicon nitride hard mask. To prepare the device for transfer printing, it is first encapsulated in silicon nitride. In the silicon nitride, tethers are patterned and we can create suspended coupons by under etching the indium aluminium arsenide layer presented in dark blue. This release edge creates suspended coupons. In this picture you can see a coupon that is tethered by four silicon nitride strips to the substrate and floats 500 nanometers above it. Now the sample is ready to be transfer printing using the Accelerprint transfer printing tool. In the first step, the coupon will be picked up from the source. Now the tool is moving to the target wafer and lowers the coupon. It aligns to the correct waveguide. And we'll print this coupon on the target. After printing, the device is fixed by curing the BCB and little post-processing remains. Fias are made to access the contacts and metal pads are deposited. As a quick recap, so a silicon nitride circuit with no top cladding is first made. A photodiode is printed on top of it and the post-processing is done to make electrical contacts. This brings me to the third part of the presentation, the results. These transfer printed UTC photodiodes show a high responsivity of 0.8 ampere per watt at one volt biasing. 
This corresponds to an external quantum efficiency of 65% if corrected for grating coupler losses. You have to take into account this is only for a 20 square microns active region. The second result is a dark current, which is rather high for these small devices in the range of tens of microamps. Next is a frequency response. These photodiodes are characterized up to 67 GHz and show a clean RC response with both low capacitance and low resistance, promising a very high speed operation. However, a first photoresponse measurement shows a bandwidth of only 20 GHz, leaving room for improvement. Finally, I will give you a conclusion and outlook on this topic. I have shown it is possible to transfer print UTC photodiodes on a silicon nitride platform and to achieve a high responsivity even with a small footprint. However, the current devices still show very high dark current. This needs to be improved. Also, the bandwidth, bandwidth is a point of action, although I believe this is currently the result of a contact design that will be optimized and a measurement set up with intrinsic bandwidth limitations. As a sneak peek, I can show you that recently for test devices, the dark current was reduced with a few orders of magnitude. Thank you for listening and I'm happy to answer any questions.